My name is Gareth Jones, I'm an artist and I grew up in modern utopia called Milton Keynes. Today I've come back from the future to talk to you about two related subjects. Uh, one, public space in the new city today. Uh, let's think of also perhaps the history of public space in the city. And the other uh, is a project which um, Claire just mentioned, uh, City Club, which I've devised with another artist, Mills Norman. Uh, Public space is our right to the city, the ground on which we stand as citizens. In the early 1970s, Helmut Jacobi visualized uh, central Milton Keynes before um, it had been built. And this is one of his drawings. This drawing shows the city square, um, a place where people can relax, look at art, engage in the life of the city. Uh, I'm interested in this space because it lasted barely 20 years before uh, it was built on. And uh, thinking about this problem, this question of public space in Milton Keynes, uh, is very key um, to the City Club project. Welcome to the City Club. City Club is a project for animating the public spaces that will surround the newly expanded MK Gallery uh, when it reopens. Uh, it's a project that draws extensively uh, on the history, strange to use that word, but nevertheless, the history uh, of Milton Keynes, specifically its design history in terms of referring to the visionary architecture of the city that was promoted by the Milton Keynes Development Corporation. It also draws on the other half uh, of Milton Keynes, the social development side, uh, in terms of drawing on the tremendous back catalogs of community art projects in the city. And it brings these two things together to make spaces that are designed for programming. Uh, where the gallery can uh, create, oversee events to happen. Uh, I think part of the failure of the um, city square wasn't so much to do with uh, a failure of design, it was to do with a uh, failure of programming. People had lost faith in the vision that promoted that design and uh, in a way didn't want to use it. Um, city Club, as I said, draws extensively on the history of Walter Keynes in the 1970s. In Xanadu, you could look on the stately pleasure dome decree. Welcome to the original City Club. It's 1974, and the Milton Development Corporation, no expense is spared. They've designed a fun palace. All sorts of things are happening in here. Here there's a rodeo, here there's a farmer's market, here there's a sauna, here there's a souk. It's an incredibly uh, generous, expanded model uh, of what leisure could be. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it was ever going to be built. It's, uh, I think it was a diagram for future leisure. But Nils and I have been looking back at this project closely to um, see what we can bring forward uh, in the remaking of the public spaces that will surround uh, MK Gallery. Um, this, incidentally, in the middle, uh, this sort of block with the, the people on it, was going to be uh, both a community uh, television station and a citizen's advice bureau because the MKDC wanted you to have a good time even when you were claiming legal aid. Here, there was going to be uh, trampolines that you could jump up and down on and your silhouette would be reflected. Um, I don't want to do it personally, but it was there. Um, beyond that, uh, some kind of Japanese water. Department. So a very kind of mixed, expansive, generous model uh, of what leisure could be. And I should stress also that it wasn't just going to be a local facility, it was a national facility. People were going to come from all across the country uh, to visit the city club. Um, this is another detail of the model, showing some kind of science theme park area. Uh, apparently there's a Van de Graaff generator in the middle of it. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Um, very key to the idea behind uh, City Club is to mix art, architecture, and design to make excellent public spaces. And for me, uh, this image has come to kind of symbolize um, that aim. Uh, as with so many things, this model uh, was destroyed at some point. Um, we're able to refer in such detail to the design history of the city because the MKDC produced a document called the Infrastructure Act to sell the look of Milton Keynes to other cities. And this is a collage I made using elements from the Infrastructure Act uh, as a kind of mood board for a new playscape that may exist behind the gallery. Um, the piece of play equipment at the top, the Tri-Stack, was designed by Brian Milne. But he also designed the famous bench here, which I guess you could say um, went viral. And um, a very simple idea underlies our front work, which is that um, we want 
to make a scenario where the infrastructure of the city and its public art swap places. So sculptures become science, and science becomes sculptures, just on a very sort of crude, simple level, where there's a kind of blending of the normal um, categories, the hierarchies that exist between art, architecture, and design. Uh, and in the middle of that, we get lost, as it were, because one of the things that we're retrieving from the original uh, Milton Keynes plan is this idea, which you can still pretty much see out there today, of making a non-emphatic architecture. Uh, an architecture, not that today we're very much involved with the idea of a boutique architecture, but the idea of an architecture, a cityscape where the trees, the roads, the lamps, the buildings all merge into one, well, I call it a giant sculpture. Um, as I mentioned, the uh, original City Club model has gone, so as an artist, I can uh, make another one, make my own version of it, which is what this was here, made in collaboration with 6A Architects. Uh, this is their representation uh, of the new gallery building, and here there's um, a kind of idea for a place. <coughs> Another detail. This is a, uh, an idea for a piece of play equipment made using um, sewer pipes. Sewer pipes, if you were here in the 70s, were a very big feature of the landscape, uh, and you had to make your own entertainment, and this is kind of based on that. <laughs> Uh, something we've been looking at also is the idea that the imagery of leisure helps to define the, the enjoyment, the entertainment, the leisure that we'll experience in the place. And I think the MKDC was really big on this idea. Here they're imagining uh, life for the residents, for the citizens of the new city uh, as a game of snakes and ladders. Uh, the MKDC were also notable patrons of architecture. Uh, this is uh, the only uh, public structure built, uh, designed and built by Archigram. Uh, in the UK, or well, anywhere, in fact. Uh, again, at a certain point, um, this was demolished. Um, uh, to just talk briefly about methodology, because Claire mentioned I was doing a PhD, but only very briefly, uh, my work as a researcher involves drawing on my memory and my experience as much as kind of more abstract forms of research. So when I'm looking at this structure, uh, I'm remembering being part of its user group. That's me there, staring out into the future. <laughs> So, some actual designs that we've been working on. Um, even though every element of the, the, the site of Abingdon Tower where the MKTC was based has apparently been destroyed, the hand gates that led you to it have survived for some reason. And so we're interested in looking at moving those to central Milton Keynes to become the entrance to a place gate. And here's a view of what that might uh, look like. The classic globe lamp of central Milton Keynes um, here rises and falls, rises and falls so realistically at different heights. You're immediately entering a more uh, playful realm. And here's a visualization uh, that we've made uh, for the playscape. Many of the original bits of play equipment from the 70s that we were referencing uh, can't be used now for health and safety reasons, so we're updating them for the 21st century. Uh, I'd really like to stress that all the ideas that we're putting into this project are um, let's say, developments of the original ideas. This isn't a nostalgic exercise. It's about making spaces that are right for the 21st century, that will be right for the activities that happen in them, while drawing on, let's call it, the, the genius loci of central Milton Keynes. Uh, here's a postcard that I made for the exhibition that I did at NK Gallery in 2011, which uh, uses a grid of 16 original Milton Keynes postcards uh, and returns them to the format of a single postcard. And um, I'm going to use this now, or use details from it, as a way to talk a bit about public space in central Milton Keynes. Um, this whole section of my talk has been slightly um, preempted by Rob Gifford's remarks earlier, but I'm just going to go ahead with it anyway, because I can't not talk about it. Uh, the shopping building of Central Milton Keynes, uh, perhaps the most complete expression of the NKDC style uh, and one of its most uh, complete structures, was uh, now famously designed not to have any doors because the idea would be that this, this would be part of the circulation of the city, that you would be able to move through it, that it would be a space that was porous and liberating for the visitor rather than the more conventional shopping centre uh, that we know today. This is the sort of diagram that the MKDC used to sort of turn out in their sleep. What it shows 
is the um, all the pedestrian routes of the area. So the, all the heavy black lines are the places where people walk, in short. This is the city square here. So you can see at a glance uh, what putting doors on this building does to the free circulation uh, within the city. And easy movement was one of the promises of the master plan, of the 1970 master plan of Milton Keynes. Uh, here's a view uh, of Queen's Court. Uh, you'll notice immediately that there's no branding. What is unbranded public space? What could unbranded public space be in Milton Keynes? This is a question we keep coming back to. Um, here's a postcard, I think from around 1980, which shows the exterior of the building. And you'll notice that the exterior is very used. Uh, active street front is one of the kind of the goals of all urban planners today. But it seems to be slowly disappearing from the outside of this building, because like so much of the space of this city, it's turning in on itself. And the idea of reopening those spaces out to people uh, is very key to what we're doing. Um, just to move away from the centre, this is a, a development of houses at uh, Marshworth, which I, I believe were quite popular with people from the Open University. And you'll notice that the gardens are open. This is the public space, this is the private space. So public and private are essentially uh, confused. This is a very interesting idea in domestic architecture, and it's one that in a slightly less extreme form is replicated in the housing types across the central area, the estates surrounding um, central and northern Keynes. Again, I think this is beating a retreat. Uh, and finally, this image of Woolen Lake under construction, I think from 1975. And just to talk about what, I just remember what an intriguing environment it was here in the 70s, because uh, no, it was so open, it was so empty. Uh, the plan was to make a city greener than the surrounding countryside, but the trees hadn't grown at this point. So you could literally just start walking and keep walking. Uh, with the growth of trees, with the growth of the city, the city inevitably becomes compartmentalized, privatized in a sense. The easy movement across it uh, becomes harder. So perhaps part of the organic process of Milton Keynes is that it becomes uh, a more private place. But I can still drift across the surface of the city and find extraordinary places. Another Wednesday in paradise? No, this is the heart of Central Milton Keynes. These are some pictures I took the other day uh, on the Seclo Moot or Mount, um, which is a recreation of an ancient outdoor meeting place, an early form of local government, which the NKDC uh, constructed, uh, sorry, at Aylesbury County Council, I must get this right, constructed next to um, the actual uh, uh, council offices. I'm just going to show you this postcard. I'll get up on here. Um, so the Seclo route is here under construction. Here we have the council offices. There's already a kind of dialogue going on here about democracy and politics. Here we have this, the main civic uh, square. Let's think of it as the polis, as a place where uh, the citizen and the city might merge in some way, and people will be able to come out of the council building into the main space, um, perhaps bumping into Plato and Aristotle on the way to a symposium. Who knows? Um, but this idea that sort of democracy was built into the design of the city centre uh, really fascinates me. Here we have the um, the old road that led across Bradwell Common. I don't know if it's a mind-numbingly obvious thing to point out, but we are actually on the site of an ancient common. So I'm sure of Kings is built on common land. Quite possibly, we could be grazing our sheep out there right now if we read the small print. But um, to not trivialize it, to keep it serious for a moment, uh, perhaps that is another part of the genius loci of Central Milton Keynes, the idea that this, this is an ancient common, and that will in some way keep the space here at public. A romantic idea. But as you can see from some of these photos, um, I am. Uh, something that is um, quite amazing about Central Milton Keynes is just how much of it does look like the original drawing. There's another jack of the drawing of a wheelbar uh, from the early 70s. And you can find spots that uh, pretty much replicate this. Um, the avenues of trees that run up and down the boulevards. Um, the deep vista is such a key part of the design and something that, uh, through my work on the um, design of the building as well as an advisor, uh, I've tried to incorporate in this vista here, where the, the deep vista that runs uh, through uh, 
so vertically and horizontally across multiple planes and uh, distance rather, um, is replicating the traditional enfilade of a sequence of galleries. Uh, a possible idea for the uh, sign in Milton Keynes Gallery, because wherever you see this, you know that you're home in Milton Keynes. Uh, and finally, um, the redways. Uh, there's been a lot of very interesting talk about uh, the idea of the commons and community, but what also about, let's call it, solo movement through the city. And for me, one of the kind of freest places in the city is today the redway, it's still the network of cycleways. Uh, which crisscrosses the city and allows me to ride off into the sunset. Thank you.